Hi, welcome to Saturday Solution. We're glad you joined us. We're in the fifth grade this week. This is the problem that we posted yesterday. So what we're trying to do is take decimals and get kids to convert them to fractions. You'll see that the first problem we have is the language. Your kids have to know all three different terms so that they are able to do what you're asking them to do without the language getting in the way. Now, let's talk about the math. You've got kids in your class who are looking at this problem and their anxiety is rising because they don't have any understanding of place value. So what are you going to do about that? You can't just say it louder, right? And you can't just say it multiple times because that's not scaffolding. The problem with anxiety, and it's a big problem, is that when anxiety goes up, for any of us, our students, us, our performance goes down. And so this totally gets in the way of the teaching. How can you possibly get new information in if anxiety has risen and their capacity to listen goes down? So here's what we need to do. When you sense that there's anxiety in your class, and teachers, you know what it looks like. It usually sounds like quiet, disengaged. It can even sound like kids goofing off because they're anxious that they can't do the work. So their anxiety manifests in several different ways. When you see that, it's your cue that you need to scaffold what they're doing. And what I mean by scaffold is, if we know that kids learn in terms of first concrete, then pictures, then abstract, and you're doing abstract by asking them to take 6.1 and turn it into a fraction, and that's making them tense, then you've got to go back down to pictures. Whatever you're doing, take it down, and that's how you'll scaffold. So let me show you a great way to scaffold for this particular problem for fifth grade. So what I used to do is I would take just a giant piece of paper, you know, your big butcher paper, and give them a visual of what you're talking about. Here's your decimal point. It's your wall between your holes and your parts. Here's your tenths. Here's what they look like. Here's your hundredths. Here's what they look like. Here's the thousands. Look how much smaller the hundredths are than the tenths. Would you rather have a tenth of a candy bar or a hundredth? This all goes just in the face of what they know about tens and hundreds as whole numbers. Now with this in mind, all you have to do is when they look at this, it gives them a visual. It gives them a picture of what they're doing. Is it cheating? No, it's where they are. And so for as long as they need this chart, let them use this chart. When they don't need it anymore, they'll say, I don't need it. And you'll know that they've moved past that point but we can't get angry with them when they're just not ready for what we're teaching. So scaffold, consider the emotions, and take care of yourself so you can get up and teach.